Thank you, Professor Ramli, for the introduction. Um, high Commissioners, Naval Chiefs, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon. Firstly, I would like to thank um, Vice Admiral Griggs for inviting me to deliver a presentation at this seminar. I'm indeed honored uh, to be here today in Perth. Ladies and gen gentlemen, I'm standing here now while my country is going through a tremendous and enormous difficult time. I would like to take this opportunity to wish and convey my deepest condolence to the families and friends of those affected by the MH370 tragedy. Malaysia, who is mostly affected, is deeply saddened with the incident. At the same time, Malaysia greatly appreciates the strong cooperation rendered by our international partners for the search and rescue operation. This operation is aptly considered as a massive multilateral search and rescue operation with the initial involvements of 26 countries, among other includes our ASEAN neighbors, Australia, who is leading the current search and rescue, the United States of America, China, Japan, and New Zealand. All were united with the common objective to find the missing aircraft. Ladies and gentlemen, let me continue with my presentation. It is my pleasure to share with all of you on the lessons for IONS from ADMM Plus Maritime Security Experts Working Group. In delivering the presentation today, for the first half of my presentation, um, I would like to share with you the experiences that I had during the Malaysia's co-chairmanship uh, in the Maritime Security Experts Working Group with Australia, and the second half will be the net of uh, will be the um, sharing of experience in uh, handling the the FTX we had last year. Some of the inputs uh, were sourced from my Australian colleagues, as well as the Malaysian personnel who were involved in the first cycle of ADMM Plus Expert Working Group on Maritime Security with me. It is my hope that the presentation would be useful to today's participants and enlighten you on some of the practical initiatives in countering the maritime security issues. Ladies and gentlemen, the ADMM Plus platform identified five focus areas namely the humanitarian and disaster relief, maritime security, military medicine, counter-terrorism, and peacekeeping operations. Now, a new area, and thus new working group, has been established, namely humanitarian mine action. I had the privilege of co-chairing the expert working group on maritime security, together with my wonderful and charismatic Australian counterpart, Commodore Stuart Mayer and his predecessor, Commodore Vince DiPetro, since 2011 until January 2014. Malaysia and Australia were at first cautious as to how it could be planned to move ahead. Nevertheless, both managed to table the ADMM Plus military Maritime Security Experts Working Group concept paper, which was later agreed at the ASEAN Defence Senior Officials Meeting Plus in April 2011 in Singapore, sorry, in Indonesia. The concept paper recognises two things. Firstly, that it is important to secure sea lines of communications for the economy and security of the Asia-Pacific region. And secondly, there are a myriad of challenges in the maritime domain including piracy and armed robbery, illicit trafficking in drugs and arms, people smuggling, and illegal fishing. The establishment of the EWG was therefore deemed useful to develop effective cooperation in countering the challenges. In playing such a role, the EWG proposed that it should commence 
with identifying areas of common interest across the spectrum of maritime security challenges. Then, these common areas of interest could be further explored and to develop practical initiatives for defense and military cooperation. In maintaining the good order at sea, the EWG aims at enhancing maritime cooperation at multilateral level, analyzing significant maritime security threats in the region and providing for wider information sharing. The EWG reports through the ATSOM Plus Working Group to the ATSOM Plus, that is the Secretary General or the Permanent Secretary level, then to ADMM, which is the Defence Minister's meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, as in the work plan of the EWG, it is acknowledged that there are already a number of arrangements addressing maritime security concerns. Among others are the ASEAN Regional Forum Intersessional Meetings on Maritime Security, the ASEAN Maritime Forum, the Regional Cooperation Agreement on Combating Piracy and Armed Robbery Against Ship in Asia, the Western Pacific Naval Symposium, and of course, the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium. It is therefore important that the EWG on maritime security only complements those arrangements so as to make it relevant and more efficient. As the expert working group was only starting up, the earlier part of the EWG was focused on developing the common understanding of maritime security, sharing of perspectives and developing cooperative mechanisms acceptable to all ADMM Plus members. To facilitate this, the EWG was planned to meet twice a year. It was deemed appropriate so that the meeting could effectively monitor the implementation of the planned activities. In 2011, the EWG conducted meeting to identify common areas of interest, priority challenges and concept for future cooperative activities. Later, it was planned to provide for exchange of perspectives on the security impacts of the issues and to improve information sharing. In 2012, a scenario-based workshop was planned to explore potential cooperation and progress assessed and work plan refined. In 2013, the EWG agreed that the information sharing would become more systematic and credible and that practical cooperation will be illustrated in the form of an exercise. The EWG is in fact one of the most frequently meeting held among the five EWGs under the platform of ADMM Plus. The EWG sat on seven occasions since the first one held here in Perth in 2011. The first cycle of meetings for the EWG finally concluded in January 2014 in Malacca, Malaysia. Maritime security challenges and issues are always dynamic in nature. It was therefore vital for the EWG members to appreciate the present maritime security challenges and try to incorporate into the initiatives to counter them to make the EWG relevant. Both Malaysian and Australian co-chairs appreciated and were very encouraged by the pragmatic open and community-minded approach the delegates took in discussing maritime security challenges in the EWG. Members focused on what could be realistically achieved collaboratively rather than on areas where our many interests differ. This concerted goodwill and cooperative efforts saw this forum achieve its mandated practical defence outcomes. In order to promote greater information sharing, the ADMM Plus Maritime Security Community Information Sharing Portal, or MSKIP, was launched in 2013 and is now operational. If you look at the website of the ASEAN Secretariat, you will find this uh, portal. Allow me to talk a little bit about the field training exercise that we had. The aim of the FTX the field training exercise is to promote practical maritime cooperation in information sharing among ADMM Plus countries 
and build a common understanding to establish and practice baseline interoperability procedures in maritime security matters. From 29 September to 1st October last year, Australia and Malaysia hosted the inaugural ADM Plus Maritime Security FTX in HMAS Creswell, Java's Bay. The process leading to the FTX included the planning conferences and tabletop exercise. This process enabled the participants to prepare and structure the implementation of the FTX through providing the possible scenarios and discussing potential responses and courses of action. The TTX worked on the guiding principles to de-escalating situations, increase the likelihood of safe outcomes for mariners, and encourage proactive assistance, support, and partnership across ADMM+. It was the first practical activity in the EWG and regarded by Malaysia's former defence minister as a significant milestone in promoting the spirit of cooperation in the wider context of the Asia-Pacific region. The TTX generated enthusiasm among EWG members for an FTX at sea to establish an ADMM Plus interoperability baseline and highlighted the importance of information sharing among the ADMM Plus countries as well as the significance of a timely and effective coordination in pursuing cooperative activities in maritime security. The FTX has four key objectives to enhance mutual understanding and interoperability in maritime security operations, focusing on boarding exercises, to develop and trial an ADMM Plus maritime security communications and C2 architecture, to derive maximum individual and unit training benefit, and to contribute to regional engagement and maritime security capability amongst ADMM Plus countries. 13 countries participated in the FTX, including Malaysia, which sent a frigate KD Jabat. The FTX gave focus on information sharing, building common understanding, and establishing an interoperability baseline between ADMM Plus countries. FTX involved five main phases covering from preparatory briefings and boarding demonstrations to post exercise workshops to identify achievements and improvements to the FTX. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now elaborate on the lessons learned from the FTX. As presented by the Australian and Malaysian FTX players in January 2014 at the EWG meeting, there are several lessons learned. During boarding exercise, it is useful to have umpires from both the boarding party and the ship receiving the boarding party. Countries that do not assign a ship to participate in the FTX should provide boarding party with necessary equipment. The second one, communications plan is important and beneficial. It is also useful to translate keywords and tactical operational verbs into various languages. The third one, information sharing. The continued high-level collaboration between the lead planners of the different navies and defense departments proves to be very, very useful. Number four, the lack of familiarity with multilateral SOPs, publications, and language issues could be mitigated by a series of planning at conferences, exercise instructions, and other preparations. Number five, participating countries' capabilities need to be effectively incorporated into the planning process. Number six, sufficient time for pre- and post-exercise meetings and equal participation are needed. Early establishment of logistics cell is indeed very useful. Useful to have lessons learned workshop to gather comprehensive findings. This is what be after the FTX. Both Australia and Malaysia were very encouraged by the strong demonstration of support for the exercise from ADMM Plus member countries. It was a significant demonstration of practical cooperation and a substantial achievement for the working group. The conduct of an FTX 
signifies the culmination of practical cooperation among expert working group members during the working group's first term. Ladies and gentlemen, from the inaugural meeting in July 2011 in Perth to the seventh meeting, EWG has grown positively from identifying common interests to the constructive work plans and last year's FTX in Java's Bay, Australia. It is indeed an achievement as within a span of approximately three years, EWG members had grouped together and worked towards addressing the current issues and how best they could be resolved in concert. The EWG was indeed has indeed been in line with the guiding principles of open and outward looking. As it progresses, it is hoped that these principles and the constructive dialogues be continued. Malaysia and I believe Australia also hope that firm foundations have been laid down and believe the new co-chairs, namely Brunei and New Zealand, will bring about more positive outcomes. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.